You know, I was I was gonna be I I, lo- I was gonna start off tonight by pointing out how I finally fixed that gray flashing screen thing in 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 the show, and yeah. and then you unplug your computer <laughs> live on the air. I uh, <laughs> this is why I don't run the show because I would be really bad at it. I try to tilt my monitor up to show you Peggy sitting up on the shelf. And I and I unplugged my computer. But don't you have an iMac? Yeah, which means if the one plug comes out the back, the monitor is the monitor is the computer. Right. That's it. That's that's what you've got. So if the monitor comes out of the computer. Or if the plug comes out, whatever. It's been a really long weekend. Yes. Yeah. I, I, the, to be perfectly fair, yes. Your husband is a series of tubes. Yes. My <laughs> husband came home from the hospital Friday. Yeah. We spent three days with different visiting nurses teaching me how to hook up his intravenous nutrition. Because I have to do that with my fucking art degree. <laughs> And uh, and then yesterday I had to uh, American healthcare. Up- mm-hmm. American healthcare. It's wonderful. Yeah. Then uh, after two hours with the visiting nurse yesterday, I had to get set up, and we had something like four hundred trick or treaters. We didn't have any. I bought three hundred little six packs of Oreos. Oh. All right. And now that that is out. that was cool though. That was an awesome. Yeah. But last year we gave out full size candy bars and I went to the Costco to get the packs of full size candy bars and they didn't have them. So I panicked and I called Dan in the hospital. (laughs) I was like, what do I do? (laughs) And I was like, they have these little six packs Oreos. Like, will that make kids cry or is that okay? He's like, that's a great treat. That's awesome. Yeah. I never got Oreos. Uh, Oreos would be awesome. but I ran out of them. Luckily, I bought three Costco sized bags of backup candy, of which I went through two. <laughs> By 830. Now, they're making up the night, making up for lost time. They're, they're swarming again. Yeah. Although which was great. Like, I'm happy we made so many kids happy, but uh, it's been a little bit, a bit, a little, been a little bit busy. Although, you know, what's what's coming this year. It's like it's the Black Friday reboot. Oh no! Because everybody's going to be coming out with their vaccinated selves, the first time in two years. They're not vaccinated selves. Let's uh, be honest. Yeah. The first time in two years, we might actually have Black Friday. For, I, I hoped it was dead, but no. Yeah, it's, I it, really thought I really thought we might be able to kill it. It's it's like in front of the 13th movie where Jason was dead and in the grave and the dumb guy was like, I have to make sure he's dead. So they dug him up and stuck a lightning rod in him and he came back to life. No, leave it alone. Like, thanks, Carl. All right. I don't like Carl, probably because of that kid on The Walking Dead that I don't like. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to spoil that for you, but (laughs) you're going to be happy. Anyway, uh, let's get this shit underway. Now that I've delayed us by like 20 minutes. Oh, shit happened. Sorry. Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible shit, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call... What the fuck is wrong with you? And um, we're kicking off tonight with, of course, the thing that it is like clockwork. I, I want to go back to the archive, the vast fucking archive for the show and see just how many times immediately after Halloween, this same fucking thing happens because always Halloween comes and then we get the story. Like fucking clockwork. (sighs) Virginia Councilman 
posts, then deletes picture of himself in blackface as sexual chocolate. Because of course he does. Politician based in Virginia has apologized after receiving considerable backlash for taking a photo of himself posing in blackface. Now this is one of the things, this wasn't an old photo that resurfaced. This was a new photo that here in in our Lord of twenty the year of our Lord twenty twenty one A D, he decided to himself. Let's let's do blackface now. Hmm? Why? Well, he's got he's got a good reason, Tara. Oh no! According to NBC twelve, Warsaw Councilman Farron Hamblin. That's a name. Pose for a picture in blackface as one of Eddie Murphy's Coming to America characters. The white politician has posted the offending photo to his Facebook account over the weekend with the caption, quote, In honor of my late friend, I went out as the legendary Randy Watson tonight. Give it up for my band, Sexual Chocolate. So you did, your friend died. What was it, on his deathbed? Was he like, come here, Farron, come here. I have, you got to do something. What, what, what is, what is it, buddy? What do, what, what do we do? You got to come here, come closer. What? I need you to go out in blackface on Halloween. You got to do it for me because I'm dying. He's got to do it, do it for me. If anybody asks you that on their deathbed, they actually never liked you. No, they didn't like you. They, they want to fuck, they want to fuck with you. Oh. Uh, let's see. Um, but also, like you could do this costume. You could do it at, without, without the blackface. blackface. Adam the... Sandler used to do Bill Cosby on SNL. You know what he did? He put cornstarch in his hair and wore ugly sweaters. Yep, no blackface, and that's, that's it. That, that's fucking Adam Sandler, and he's terrible. And everybody knew what he was doing. Yeah, and he's not known for being like the most culturally sensitive guy, but he knew not to do that. And he was so, the dude, as always, they're so grumpy about it. Folks, I made a post of me dressed like the movie character Randy Watson. For those of you who know the movie, Randy is a black man. So I dressed the part, suit, hair, and yes, my makeup was brown. Many saw it degrading, which I did not. Oh. Which is, that's, well, that's the most, okay, right, that is the most important opinion. It's, it's the opinion of the person who is actually in blackface. I don't think it's offensive, so it's uh, um but since I'm white, it's considered by some offensive to dress as a black person. Yes. Oh. It's not considered offensive to wear that costume. It's offensive to paint your fucking face. Because menstrual shows there's a long history of law for oppressed and fucking bitch goddamn. This is not hard. The Jerry curl wig and the suit. People would have got it. The only way you can't comprehend this is if you literally, you are actively trying not to. You are forcing yourself not to appreciate the point that's being raised. That's the only way you're doing it on purpose. It's but the I, a white dude was not offended. So what's the problem? We have every fucking year, Tara. Like, am I wrong? It's I'm not right. No. I seem to remember every year after Halloween, we have one of the fucking stories. Some motherfuckers decided, hey, this is the year I bring black I, I bring back blackface. Every this is the year. year. Every- either there's some fucking celebrity. Somebody. Somebody. Is it like like someone in the world has to it, it someone has to be the designated asshole their pick this it's your turn that movie cabin in the woods yeah right somebody gets chosen to be the ritual dumbass for yes. the year. otherwise the old ones will rise and murder us all <laughs> exactly uh, all right next up this this is about as florida a fucking florida headline as you can fucking florida Holy crap. Florida man had live grenade clown mannequin inside truck. (laughs) 
Okay. Deputies in Florida found a live grenade in the truck of a, quote, idiot. They're even calling him who was driving with a terrifying clown mannequin in the passenger seat. Footage released Monday by the Flagler County Sheriff's Office shows the moment a deputy stumbled upon the explosive find after Lewis Branson, 65, was pulled over for expired tags on his Dodge pickup. So here you are. Your tags are expired. Happens to the best of us, but you're driving with a mannequin in the pasture seat, which is often a way people use to defeat the high occupancy lane requirements. So that's another ding against you. And while you're doing this, you have a fucking grenade. Let's quote, oh shoot, this is for real. A deputy asked her partners after discovering the, the grenade inside a sealed canister in the back of Branson's ride. Um, Branson told deputies he found the grenade three or four years ago while cleaning out a veteran's home and decided to keep it. Hey. County. Uh, in, in your truck? It, it, is, it is toolbox. County Sheriff's Office spokeswoman, uh, Melissa Morale. He thought it was cool, so he kept it in his toolbox and was driving around with a grenade. <laughs> For some time, an explosive disposal team conducted an X-ray of the device, which was believed to be active based on its internal mechanisms. Later, safely detonated nearby. Do we have the picture there? Yeah, there, there, there's, there's the picture. That little can there. Just get a hand grenade, you know. I don't understand the people who find some very dangerous thing and decide it's a collector's item it's a great thing. like I, wow i found this desiccated old grenade obviously this is a cool thing i should keep why why because my instinct would be i need to figure out how the fuck to get rid of this thing without Blowing my parts off. Like in in we're we're presuming this is all right, this is a 20th century quite likely from you know way back. Um just judging by the age and everything. It, it, that's all of those years for those explosives to sit there. We're not talking C4. This is ye oldy type explosives. And those weren't always all that stable after a while. Like, I watched Lost. We mentioned that so often. I know so what often. happened to Arst. And Alana. Just a bunch of years to show junk. Gong! It's... You could... Ooh, thank you. You could not pay me to hold a grenade. You couldn't fucking pay me. Because I appreciate the principles of combustion i'm a big fan of my limbs like this dude was just having all of the things not to do at once clown mannequin expired tags grenade it makes you wonder how, what the fuck like i don't want to use like riding dirty or anything but it makes you wonder what's going on in florida cars at any given time on any given day just a regular fuckery. old day in Florida. What? Just, just fuckery, <laughs> rampant fuckery. Exactly. Naked people. Yeah. Live explosives. Meth. Yeah. Dark rituals. Uh. All right. Next one. I'm boiled gonna... peanut for some reason. <laughs> I like boiled peanut. Shush. Oh, uh. didn't you just buy them when we were in Florida? They were literally boiling them in like an old oil drum. First of all. That's how, you know, they you got the good ones. Yeah, we pulled over to some place where I was like, are we buying peanuts or meth here? The whole car Either. smelled like, like weak old gym socks. I made him move them to the trunk because I was like, these are the worst smelling things. <laughs> like, it's like we have a car full of like a teenage lacrosse team's gym socks. Andy. So I'm going to get, I'm going to get to my guitar geekery weeds on 
Um, we're talking about wood, everybody. Who wants to talk about wood? Let's talk about wood. Wood is very different from, say, aluminum or steel or any other building material in that it's organic and hence imperfect. There are quite, there are examples of, especially with Gibson guitars, because they have a flaw in them. Shut up, Gibson fans. You know it's true. Um, the headstocks pop right the, the fuck off. people are going to be like, actually, aluminum is organic. It's an on the period of table. Like, you know those people are coming, right? Yeah, always. What happens in guitars is if there is a fault in the wood that's imperceivable at the time, over the years, eventually, that fucking guitar is potentially could self-destruct. And they have. That like cracks will appear in the guitar. It will it will break along that grain line. Okay, not like combust. No. No, it will just st- like kind of fall apart. Yeah, you've you've put you've put wood under tension and it snaps. Like a porno. Um <laughs> wood under tension, what? Um Anyway, the reason I'm bringing all this up is wood, while we're kind of used to it, it's still not to be fucked around with, especially when it's holding up tons of shit. Uh, Two men suspected of cutting wood from bridge with chainsaw. Jefferson County, Washington. Two men were arrested after state officials said they were caught cutting chunks of wood from a bridge with a chainsaw. Washington State Department of Natural Resources said a pair of hunters were out in uh, Clearwater's block when they heard chainsaws on Friday. Officials said this happened behind a locked gate and the lock was broken off. Hunters reached out and an officer of the area responded. Officials say the officer discovered two men cutting chunks out of the cedar logs that form the base of the bridge. See, in the pandemic, one of the side effects of the supply chain is the cost of wood has skyrocketed. It's it's gone way up. There's a lot of demand for building materials because getting it from place to point A to B. So now instead of like going into homes and yanking out the copper, like abandoned homes and shit, now we're we're sabotaging bridges. Except, like, this this isn't like, you know, you can cut a chunk out of the aluminum or some shit. If you hit the wrong spot, even in a piece of wood this big, you are going to potentially find a fault in the grain, a fault in the wood. The whole thing could just go, fuck it. Because... But it's organic. It's not. I, I, don't, I don't know if y'all know this, but um, our infrastructure <laughs> is not doing great. No, no. Like if you have driven a car in the past 10 years, you might have noticed that shit's fallen apart a little bit. Yeah. And it, it, and it doesn't seem like we're interested at all in fixing that. It doesn't, does it? Why? So it doesn't really need the push, is what I'm saying. Okay, so uh, yeah, that that that's that's one bless your heart. Let's go from one bless your heart to another in Hawaii, and we got video, and and this is uh, uh, I, uh, what what? Okay, we have seen people use all manner of ridiculous getaway vehicles. We've seen them using uh, front loaders, ATVs, lawnmowers, but typically when people try to get away on a lawnmower, it's a motorized lawnmower. Yes. Was arrested for arson after a small... Yeah, so here um, there is a dude trying to escape arson on a push lawnmower. Just just soak that shit in there, guys. Honolulu. Police say an arson suspect 
on Hawaii Island chose a bizarre getaway car in a spectacle captured on camera. The man allegedly set a fire Monday that triggered a small brush fire in North Kona. The suspect then fled the scene on a push lawnmower. Zooming past bumper to bumper traffic in the area and getting no shortage of attention on the way. Man was subsequently subsequently arrested for theft of the lawnmower, which was reported stolen. Uh, they added he was riding the mower at the time of the arrest. Okay. He could literally run faster than that thing is doing. <laughs> yes. yes. You could what you could run faster yes you could literally get it you could beat a, a push you're riding the push lawnmower just because it has wheels doesn't make it faster than your feet no that's some basic shit i mean you kind of i gotta wonder if the guy doing the cop car was like do we even put on the lights for this one yeah, like, are we, do we, I mean, are the sirens, the sirens just seem mean. <laughs> like, is that just bullying at this point? <laughs> mother, what the fuck? Mother, what the fuck were you thinking? Oh, no, I'm in trouble. I got to get away. Uh. Uh, lawnmower. Stole a lawnmower. Stole it. Yeah, no, no kidding. Stole someone's so like. You you chose that getaway vehicle. <laughs> so now. So what are you doing? You're up. You're down. You're up. You're down. Figure out what you want to do, baby girl. So now, in addition to arson, you just had to tack on the petty foul, just for funsies. Yeah. Of a, of a fucking... That's not it. That's not even the right kind of law. <laughs> I could almost, almost understand a riding mower. That can get up to like about 15 miles an hour. All right, that's not great. But, sure. But no, there you are on the push mower. That's... Oh my God. It doesn't even look cool. It doesn't. It looks desperate as hell. Like he's trying, he's trying his best to make it look cool. It's it doesn't look cool. No, it doesn't look cool at all. Story everybody's laughing about at the police station. Yes. All right. This next one, I I I have I, I'm I'm I, I'm shame I'm going to say this before I say it, but I I have to, Mister McGee, don't make me sober. You wouldn't like me when I'm sober. Drunk Scott ripped supermarket door off as he broke in to steal more alcohol. <laughs> Holy shit. A crazed drunk ripped the front door off a supermarket in a desperate bid to get more booze. Aaron McCullough, 25, trashed the Aldi in Irvine, North uh, Irishshire. I think I'm saying that right. Um, he then went on to harass a police officer who took him to the hospital after he was injured in the break-in. McCullough uh, admitted his guilt in a previous uh, Kilmer, uh, Kilmernock Sheriff's Court hearing and returned to the dock this week to learn his fate. Um, at around 10.55, police received a call. There was someone in the premises of the Aldi. They observed the front glass door to be lying on the floor. Upon entering the store, saw numerous iron, uh, items lying around the, sh uh, the aisles. The end of the aisle display had been destroyed. The accused is at the rear of the store, making his way toward the alcohol. He was informed he was under arrest. <laughs> I'm pretty sure after they did that, he informed them to go fuck themselves. Um, <laughs> but this is an interesting question. Has anybody ever tried just getting the Hulk rip shit? <laughs> uh, like instead of the whole sundown thing with Natasha, sun's getting real low. Have they considered 
just giving him like three bottles of Jaeger. <laughs> I don't even think the Hulk could stomach three bottles of Jaeger. Come on now. It's fucking Jaeger. That shit's nasty. But then he'd pass out. Yeah, but that's fucking nasty, man. You gotta choke that shit that down. That could have been a way quicker way to save Johannesburg in Age of Ultron. I mean. It's is <laughs> I just you 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 do not think of how much your life is fucked if you don't want to be sober this goddamn bad. If you gotta blow the front door off the Aldi. <laughs> well, it's either I uh I get my shit together and go to work tomorrow, or I rip this fucking door down. Or fuck it. Fuck it, yes, indeed. Indeed, fuck it. Yes. I mean, I you can make the the you know the generalization, the stereotype about Scots and whatnot, but I will tell you, in my experience, they they are, they have more experience with alcohol than I. Every every Scots per, Scotsman I've ever a Scots person person from Scotland I've ever met has more experience with alcohol, far more. It's it, they they've learned how to control it. They've learned how to harness its powers. I just... Apparently for berserker strength. Seriously. That so door come off. Why did you really could it's the Aldi? And it's a glass door, so I love that he decided that's my secret. I'm always drunk. That's funny. But it's it's a glass door. Why did you try to pull it down? Why didn't you just throw something through it? Break it. Yeah. Also, if you're gonna steal, why steal from like the really inexpensive place? Right? I mean, go go for the top shelf. If you're you're already going to jail, right? Go for the top shelf shit. Yeah. Get the good booze. Go out with a bang. We are terrible at giving advice. Don't follow our advice. This is bad advice. Don't listen to us. I say all the time, I never used to understand chicks who stole the testers at Sephora. Because I'm like, you're already stealing. Why are you going to steal the one that comes with free pink eye? (laughs) And is half empty? Our our last one, there is... uh, if you're familiar with um, American law, First Amendment, there's a very classic example of one of the limits of the First Amendment and um, the government's imposition on people's right to free speech. And that very famous example is you can't yell fire in a crowded theater. The idea is you cannot do something deliberately. Via, you, it can be regulated to keep you from inflicting malicious harm with speech fire in a crowded theater. People are going to get hurt, blah, 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 blah. That always, it was always a thought experiment because the idea was no one would ever do that. No one would ever actually do that. LAX man yells gun in LAX sending three Hundred passengers running, grounding flights. Police at LAX said they detained two people Thursday night. Reinforced there was no current threat and no active shooter. Airport officials say no shots were fired and no weapon was recovered. Police detained two people for questioning. Dramatic scene began when a man yelled about a gun during a heated altercation in Terminal 1. Man was reportedly released. The others undergoing a mental health evaluation. Hundreds of passengers. Hundreds. And it, what, what's, what further happens is a woman who uh, said her daughter had been inside Terminal 1 said she heard a gunshot. A uh, person inside the terminal said he had uh, they had to run onto the runway because of a possible active shooter. What the knock-on effect here, there was no gunshot. But the knock-on effect here is there's a little bit of mass hysteria and people jump on the little shit. Everything goes sideways. And all 
airports are already this place where everything's under tight pressure or schedules. Things have to be done in order. There's no fucking around because if your plane miss, misses its its window for where it's supposed to be, it's a domino effect all the right. way back. It fucks up everything. Right. And into that environment, you decide, like, at least you didn't yell. Well, yelling bomb probably wouldn't have been as big a deal as gun. Because in, in America, people aren't quite. If you yelled bomb, people would be like, "What? What do we do?" You yell gun, it's oh shit, fucking run, because we're we're used to it. We're used to that in America. Every, every day, we we live with that here in Freedom. America. Every, every day. And remember, keep smiling. Uh, so, yeah, but just what in the love? <laughs> I mean, good God, why in the fucking world would you do this in an air? They don't, if you do this in an airport, they don't, they could sue you. We've seen it all the time the airports don't fucking play no they, nor do they have to don't anymore no don't test them like, we scaredy cat americans have made it so that if they waterboard you in the middle of the terminal they're probably gonna get away with it like were you the kid when you were in, in the store with your mom and she's like, don't you do it? We got, we got and, and you pulled, did you pull the tantrum shit? Did you test your mom? Were you that kid? Because that's what I think you, you were like, they aren't going to arrest me. I'm just saying a word. We'll find yeah. out. It's America. I have freedom to save words. No, specifically, specifically, this is the, like, of all the things the government can stop you from saying, specifically, this is the exception. That was carved yeah. out famously for the government preventing the speech of its citizens. This was the exception, the big one. And you're like, let's do it. The tag off your mattress if you want to be a fucking rebel. Like, right. You, you, your pillows, rip the tags off, rip the tags off your mattress. But no. And uh, the, the, you can be sued by the airlines for lost revenue. Just if they, you'll never be able to pay that off. That's just how pissed off they could be that they could do this I to just, you. Why? Like, you don't even, um, it's like, it's like, it's like Crowley and Good Omens. Like, you have no idea the ripple effect of low grade evil you have created. <laughs> So, yeah. First thing we learned tonight is. Yes, people will even do the stupid, incredible. No one would ever do that. Theoretical, hypothetical. And it's like it's not even an old one. This was like, like at least 100 years old. The, the, the whole idea of yelling fire to crap. At, at least 100 years old. Well, 50. 50, well, no, more than 50, but yeah, at least 100. And yet, we've learned um, that sometimes you just gotta get, gotta get drunk, I guess. But if you do, maybe smash the glass door, not tear it down with your bare hands. Moss drink! Like, this is how we get the Sokovia Accords. And look how that turned out. We've learned that not everything with wheels is a getaway vehicle. I The next thing we're going to see one a dude on, like, steal one child roller skate and, like, huddle himself together. <laughs> try and try. And, uh, or, like, the little kids' battery-powered cars. 
One of the coolest things with the trick-or-treaters last night, there were these two kids, they were like four or five, the two of them, and one was dressed as the Hulk and one was Captain America, and they rolled up in one of those little, in like a gray Hummer that Captain America was driving up the sidewalk. And then they both hopped out the sides. And I was like, I love that so much. <laughs> like, if you could have put a little shield logo on that motherfucker. <sighs> like, that's trick-or-treating in style. We have learned that... Well, you should have learned this shit from Wiley Coyote. We have learned that if an object is supporting a very heavy mass above it, you should not start carving pieces out of that object. Have you never played Jenga? We've learned that maybe, just maybe, antique explosives are not keepsakes. That's one we cover way too often. Really? I mean, fuck yeah. I mean, stop it. Oh, well, I appreciate the craftsmanship. It's a fucking bomb, you idiot. And finally, we've learned that just as night follows day, after every Halloween, there will be a blackness. <sighs> and they always, always protest. Why well, didn't know that? It's How is it possible that. to not know that? The only way you can, the only way you cannot know that is if it's you've decided not to know that. Especially in Virginia, where it was only what like five years ago that the governor of your state had a whole thing about doing the same thing. Yep. Yeah. Well, Terry, you have to understand that was five years ago in American terms. That that was might as well have been That's another, true. That was like another century. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I agree, Grady. Well said. <laughs>